This is Puppets by Arlie. I'm Arlie. This is how you build a coronavirus puppet. So I have a scrap piece of paper here. straight line <clears throat> and then so let's mark it off at seven inches and then in the middle it's two inches across and half of seven is three and a half. So at three and a half inches, we make two inches across. Then let's use the ruler to draw a straight edged diamond shape first. And then once we have that, Draw a gentle curve above that straight line. Now we will fold this in half and get it so that it's symmetrical. Cut it out on the curved line. And then fold it in half and trim it to make sure that it's even on both sides. Fold it in half the long way. So now I have an elongated football shape that is symmetrical on all sides and it's seven inches long and two inches across. Next, I have two sheets of craft foam. Draw a midline across your craft foam so that we can cut this out. Then lay your pattern along the midline. You can use a pattern weight and trace it.
a sphere will take eight of these little diamond shapes. The next shape, put it midline to midline, right up next to it. best glue to glue foam together is barge. This is barge and I'll put a link to it down below. It comes from shoe making and it's perfect for gluing surfaces together that are soft that need to move. Now if you're working with barge the fumes are toxic so you need to have a respirator and I'll put the link to the respirator in my information down below. Now, if you want to use barge, but because of the coronavirus pandemic, you can't get a hold of a respirator, be sure to do your barging outside or in a very well ventilated area. Now, in order to work with barge, you will paint the barge on both surfaces, then you'll wait for it to get tacky, and then you'll press it together. want to make our rod with the moving mouth trigger. I have a scrap of a broomstick here. It's uh, about 23 inches long and I have my two half foam circles. I'll just take one half of my circle just to see where it lands and put it right at the top and mark where it ends. And then mark where it would be comfortable to do a trigger, probably about there. And draw a straight line across to get a general sense of where our trigger should go. Then, get a scrap piece of paper. sides and then draw a little trigger shape and the hand trigger doesn't have to stick out the back it just needs one hinge point and then the mouth trigger Lay your sphere on 
top. And then draw a little mouth trigger. Maybe a little taller. And then this, this one does have to come out. Because it will have two points. It'll have a hole in the back to attach to a spring, and it'll have a hole in the middle to hinge back and forth. And these are about a little under three, three fourths of an inch. Cut these out. And then take your pattern tool. I'll provide a link to where I got this down below. Fold the pattern piece and cut out the little hole. And it makes a tiny little hole. Next, cut these out of wood. This is one fourth inch something. This is wood that I found somewhere. Be sure to have little push sticks so you can push through small pieces without getting your hands close to the blade. We have our two hinge trigger pieces cut out. This is the one for the puppeteer's hand. It has a place for hinging and it has a place to tie the pull string to. So it'll work like that. And then this is the, the jaw piece that will go up next to the puppet. And uh, it has a place for the string. It has a hinge hole and then it has a hole for the spring, which will make it pull back up. And then we also have our two holes for where we'll put our wires in order to get the hinges to work. Next, we have to make holes so that we can insert these triggers through. All right, next, we need to figure out, compared to these holes, how to make perpendicular holes in order to put our triggers through. So, I have a little scrap of wire here. I'm going to put it through the hole and I'm going to put one of my pieces on the side and take my ruler, lay it flat against the flat wood of the trigger and then find where the ruler is straight across. So I was able to make a little mark that is the center perpendicular. All right, so we got two marks that are perpendicular. And then up here also make a center line mark at the top. And that'll help determine where we put some of our eyes. All right, now we drill these holes and they need to be big enough so that our triggers can fit through. 
I have this big drill bit here. It's a little over half of an inch wide. And in order to make a large hole in this broomstick, I'm gonna drill one hole right there, one hole right there. As you can see, that's a lot more movement. Yeah, no problem there. Okay, now we sand everything. This is one of my favorite tools. It's a little handheld sander, and I'll put links down below for it. the top of this gray and everything else black all right we are all painted we have our broomstick control here and our two triggers painted next we put on the eyes so I have on my stick labeled front I'm going to mark what I think is about the center of the front, and I'm going to take my ruler and mark a half an inch down on either side. I have about an eighth inch drill bit. There's always time for safety glasses. We have two holes on your ping pong balls. Mark about a little more than a half inch. In order to give us some guidelines for cutting out. Then cut out your ping pong ball. And ping pong balls often have a discoloration at the seam, so in order to avoid pulling focus from that, I'm going to straddle my holes over that seam so that it'll be oriented to the back. Before we put on our ping pong balls, let's make a quick pattern of this hole. We can use that later. We have two small zip ties here. What you will do is thread each zip tie through your ping pong ball. Thread the zip tie loosely through one. Thread your second ping pong ball in an X through the other one So they're through each other and that will help them keep together this X and pull it tight all right and when you get them tight or tight enough not too tight that they break you have some eyeballs and you can trim off the excess zip tie tabs Next, we take our pattern of tracing around the pole. We fold it in half, and then use this to draw where we should cut away to make room for the pole on our sphere. And draw it on the top and the bottom. And do both sides top and bottom on the inside. Get a cutting blade and get your cutting mat out and cut away these little half circles. 
then that should fit over your hole. Now, let's install the triggers. I have two pieces of thick wire that is going to be the hinge for the triggers. Now, our wire needs to bend at a right angle on either side of both of our joints. So, we need to hammer down at a right angle both of these wires. And it's about, for this one, it's about a one inch overlay. And there we go. Take your top trigger and thread it in there. Through the middle hole. So we have some sticking out. Get it started a little bit. And then with this, I like to use the vice grip to bend heavy duty wire. And there we have one. Next, let's do the other one. All right, so they're each coming out on the same side, long side out. And then, let's get the heavy duty wire started a little bit. And we'll put it in the vise. Next, we glue on the sphere. It's time to barge the sphere onto the stick. It's time to put in the string. Now for this string I have a piece of braided Dacron which is a type of deep sea fishing line that we often use in marionettes. But you can use any heavy duty string. You're going to string it through our top jaw. And I usually like to do about five granny knots. And then we string it through our hand trigger. And be sure that you're not pulling it tight so that they're pulling towards each other. So when the mouth is closed, Bring the hand trigger up just a wee bit higher than perpendicular and tie that off. And here we go. And so one will pull the other. Now we make the pattern for the mouthpiece. Now, in order to draw the mouth shape, I want a mouth that is about one and three-fourths inch in a radius. I want to make kind of a round circular mouth. So I'm going to take my seam gauge and there's a little hole on the corner of seam gauges. And the neat thing about that is it allows you to draw circles. So I have a scrap piece of paper here take a piece of cardboard, put a sewing pin in it, and
we can draw a circle. Now take that circle sure the circle is symmetrical, fold it in half. circle in half and make a slit in it about three-fourths of the way down on the center line. So we have like an elongated Pac-Man here. Then you're going to take a dart by folding a triangle in the back that is about a fourth of an inch of a triangle at the base. <clears throat> then you're going to take that shape, retrace it, a straight line over where you folded your triangle dart. And round out these lines just a little bit. cut this out. And fold this in half. And clean it up to be symmetrical. the remainder of your fun foam and trace it out. And you can cut this out with a blade. should be ready to get glued on. Sand this edge and then we're going to glue it onto the jaw by taking the Pac-Man shape and shoving it all the way up in there and then making it flush with the bottom of the trigger and then curving it up. So you could paint it from here, but I want to hide the seams a bit more, so I'm actually going to put 
a coat of Plasti Dip on it. And this stuff happens to be very old, so it's a little globby, it doesn't go on smooth, but that should create kind of an interesting texture on the surface. Now, paint it gray. All right, next we're going to do the features on the eyes. We'll start out with a little angry unibrow. So, make a right angle that's two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Then make that into a triangle. Then a half an inch at the bottom. Then connect these to make a check mark for our unibrow. by folding it in half. Make sure it's symmetrical. So we got our unibrow here. And then just to give it a little bit of interest. Let's round all the edges. So, there's my unibrow. Now also, we're going to do pupils. I have some stick-on black velvet paper. And to make patterns for these, I have a hole punch for 3 4 inch and I have a hole punch for 1 half inch. I'm not sure what will look best, but Stencils. Now this eyebrow, I'm going to cut out of black reticulated foam.
All right, and then that brow will just glue directly on to our ping pong balls. Now for the texture painting, I like to do a three color scumble, meaning I'll have the base paint and then I'll do a dark version, a darker version of sponge painting and then let that dry and then I'll do a light speckling over it. So there'll be three different shades of gray on this little guy. So I always use a natural sponge and I have gray that I used earlier. Remind me a little more. A wee bit of black. Ooh. Now, I always want to make sure that my speckling is light. So sometimes I don't dip my whole sponge in. I paint it on. I always do a little test first. See if it's to your liking. And go for it. layer. Now we do the highlights. So I'm just taking the shadow paint that I had and adding some white to it. Oh, that's a nice highlight. All right. After that's dry, we're going to paint the inside of the mouth black. Now I want to mark where my mouth ends so that the black part will be where the mouth is placed. So I'm gonna use some tape to mark it off. And so I don't take any paint off. You can take the tape, stick it to your clothes, and then it should be not as sticky. All right, now I have the circle taped out where I'll need to paint. And I think I'm gonna take it a f about a fourth of an inch, just eyeballing it inside my tape line. Also, I'm going to paint the inside of the jaw. So I've got my <clears throat> back of the mouth black circle painted and my inside the jaw black circle painted. To finish this off, we're gonna cover it with a clear coat of Plasti Dip. This will help protect the paint job. Now, in order to prepare for the eyeballs, I've cut out some mock eyeballs with gaff tape to kind of decide how I want them placed, maybe. And then down here, to cover these wires from the puppeteer's hand, I'm placing some gaffer's tape. Gaffer's tape is tape that's made out of fabric and it's wonderful in puppet building. I also have thought about the idea of doing one big eye and one little eye and then our unibrow will go on top like that. Let's put the spring and the mechanism in. I have a small eyelet screw. It's black, which is fabulous. You won't be able to see it. I have two small pieces of Dacron. I got a small amount of wood glue. And I have my drill with a tiny drill bit. I'm going to drill a hole in the back underneath the trigger. Next, take the eyelet, scoop it in some wood glue, and screw it in. Next, we select a spring. I find that sometimes the easiest resistance is the best. So you're gonna take your spring and thread it onto the eyelet. All right, the spring is on, then, in this hole, you're gonna take your piece of Dacron and thread it through the hole 
and also through the spring and then tie it in a knot so that the mouth is closed and sometimes this takes a few tries to get the correct resistance now I have tied the spring to a knot and let's see if it works very good success take a tiny bit of wood glue and put it on a teeny tiny bit on all of your knots now we place the eyes on peel off the back of this of the velvet sticker place it on a sewing pin and place one on here I got my little one and puppets eye focus needs to be a little bit cross-eyed so it's believable that they're looking at you and then of course this will be this I take a pencil lay the unibar where I think it should go and make a tiny pencil mark on the ping pong balls then we'll barge them into place And I think I like where this eye placement is. So I'll roll out the pins and stick those down. Now this is one of the most exciting parts is I splurged and I bought red golf tees, which are little wooden sticks uh, that are going to represent the what are those things called that stick out of the coronavirus leave down in the comments below if you know I have a metal poker I'm gonna get out several of my golf tees here And I will have to make some short ones for the mouth. Here we go, no going back from this. to do the two on the mouth. I need to barge these guys in. First, I'll have to cut them off. I'll tell you how we're going to affix these smaller golf tees. Now on a scrap, let me show you. We'll take a tiny, you'll take a razor blade and cut a tiny little plus sign. Then this plus sign, you'll be able to put glue on the golf tee and wedge it in. Wedge in my first golf tee. here cut a tiny little plus sign and we're gonna barge these in I had to coat the golf tee with barge and the hole but since it's so small I dipped it with wet barge 
and then took it out and then waited for it to get tacky and then stuck it in. And we are officially finished with the coronavirus puppet. So I hope you don't get coronavirus, but if you want to make this, I hope it brings you joy and stay healthy and wash your hands. I hope you are safe and healthy and I hope you don't have coronavirus. And if you like this video, please subscribe. This is a message from the coronavirus. Don't wash your hands. <laughs>